This is the sermon podcast from First Christian Church in Kokomo, Indiana for March 10th, 2024. Our community of faith gathers every Sunday morning at 930 for worship, and you will find us scattered throughout our community all week long seeking to live out the way of Jesus. We hope that you will find these words encouraging and meaningful. This week, Pastor Adams gives his thoughts on a change of course. We like John 3.16, don't we? It's on bulletin boards. It's all kind of places. You ever wonder why the following verses aren't there? Hmm. Let's back up just a minute and think about what you just heard read from the letter to the Ephesians. It's all about, at one time you were, you used to act like, you followed, you used to do, you thought you wanted, you were. Okay. Followed by a great big however. If you could put a word in all caps in that passage, it might be the word however. It falls under the guise of my other favorite word in scripture, which is but. Da, 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 but. And that but goes both ways, by the way. However, in Christ Jesus, we are called to a change in the course of our lives. However, hmm. Hmm. The bottom line of that reading are these words. God planned for these things to be the way that we, wait for it, live our lives. Hmm. So you mean it's not just about admiring Jesus. Whoa. It's pretty amazing. Hmm. Too often, what we are to do in Christ Jesus, which is to show his love, becomes taken down to one word, and it's not love either, it's show. When I travel, if I'm looking for some place to worship, I don't look for a show. Anybody can put on a show, right? Anybody can put on a show that's wonderful and wow. But showing love is what Jesus is about. I used to travel more than I do now, and then I would go somewhere and be looking for some some place to, to worship or to hang out when I was at General Assembly or whatever. I don't go to the the wrong kind of a thing. I want to know, where are people actually living the love of Jesus to the best that they can? I don't care where they're meeting. I don't care if they have fancy whatevers. I want to know, how much are they about Jesus? How much are they about a change in the course that we're called in every day of our lives? We were, we used to act, we used to do, we thought we wanted, we were, however, however. You see, going to a show is much easier than showing the love of Christ. It requires a change of course. Lent is a time when we come before the Lord and we confess that we are a lot more about the used to, thought we wanted. But you know, a lot of times our humanness makes us not want to see that. Did you hear about, about that church? Man, they have like... Just the, the biggest music show, they got a band, and they got all this, and they got all that, and wow. Okay. So when they're filled up with all of that, what does that do? 
Oh, well, it's fabulous. You've just got to go see it because they put on a great worship service. But are they putting on the love when they walk out? Because I, if I have a choice between a good show and showing love, I hope you know me well enough to know that, that, that the love is going to be what it's about. What if every day you got up and you determined to live into God's however of love, that you determined that your course was going to be changed a little bit more every single day? Because I got to tell you, you look at ratings on anything. You look at, at social media influencers. You look at the ratings of shows. You look at whatever your media is that you watch or listen to. And you will discover quickly that ratings, you know, popularity, the numbers of people who are all about whatever it is, is driven by show the spectacular show. How crazy is it? How <gasps> is that? We gotta see that. Well, here's the deal. What I wanna see, and what I wanna experience, what I wanna be around, is people who, who are just steadfast about love. People who are so tuned in to Jesus. But you know what? Things haven't changed all that much. Do you know the crowds that came? They wanted to see Jesus do another miracle. They wanted to see him. Boy, can you imagine if all of the water could be wine? Ooh, imagine the party. Can you imagine his frustration with all of that? You know what? That was just to get your attention, people. This is the main course. Ooh, but we want more of that. Nope. This is what you're to be about. And in fact, the world said, heck with that. Get rid of that. And they crucified him. But here's the surprise. All the show and the spectacular stuff, that's temporary. That death, that was temporary. We're living through that now. And as we live through that, what are we going to do now? Welcome to the world that the disciples and the followers were in, in that gap between the arrest and, and, the, and the killing, they thought, of Jesus. What survived? The love. What course will always get you through? What life course will always, always get you through anything? the course of steadfast love that God gives you in Christ Jesus. You can plant your feet in it, you can set your course on it, you can set your vision on it. It will never, ever fail you. It might look like it does, but that's the wrong kind of show. That's the world and other forces that are opposed to that amazing love, trying to get you to veer off course Trying to get you to, oh yeah, I want to see the show. Mm. Mm -mm. But you know what? It's a lot like John 3, 16. We like that. Because it's about receiving. God so loved the world that he sent his son. So that we would not perish but have eternal life. We read that so that... I will not perish, but I'm going to have eternal life. Thank you, God, for Jesus. And then we go on and we get pulled off course. But we can always come back. But in that pulled off course, how easy and how tempting is it for us to literally say, oh, thank you, God, that I'm not like them. Thank you, God, that I haven't done that yet. <laughs> really? Thank you, God, I haven't glad. And cannot you just picture our Lord and Savior going, however, oh, get with the program. It's about the love. 
those words that follow are a lot more, they're a lot more difficult to hear because they define a change of course in our lives. Not just one time, gee, I got saved today and baptized and I love Jesus and now I can do whatever until I die and then I know I'm going to heaven. That's not it. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Your life is not a show. Your life is real. So real that you're created in the very image of God. So real that God never fails to keep trying to blow his Holy Spirit through you. To change, to keep you on course, to keep the sails of your life in the wind that he is blowing to guide you. What if it wasn't just a one-time thing? What if every single day... Every day, without exception, you knew. You knew. But hear this. God didn't send his son into the world to judge the world, and it's not our job either, by the way. But that the world, ooh, not just us, <laughs> might be saved through him. Through him. Not in spite of him, not because of him, but through him. How's that going to happen? That happens when each one of those who claim to follow Christ actually do it. Do. Do. What? Do. Let's take another look. Hmm. The light came into the world, and people loved the darkness more than the light. Oh, that's just those other people, right? Oops. I don't know about you, but if you're human, and I certainly am, that other stuff can look pretty attractive sometimes. Hmm. Here's the cap. Whoever does the truth does the truth, comes to the light so that it can be seen that their actions were done in God. God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him. Now for us, believes is a head game. It's a fact. That is not the meaning of the word in the original language. Believe is to dedicate your life to something. You believe, and so that's who you are. So think about that. Everyone who believes, who lives in him, will not perish, but will have eternal life. Hmm. Whoever does this truth comes to the light so that it can be seen that their actions were done in God. What if every time your eyes were whoop to something, you were so firmly planted believing in the love that God gives you in Jesus that you could, in essence, say, mm, yep, I see that, mm, okay, this is the way I'm going. You can tempt me to judge and to hate and to whatever it is, oh wow, that's terrible, this is the way I'm going. Not going over here. That is the challenge. And people don't want to hear that. People do not want to be challenged that way, especially when we're anxious and we're afraid and the world's going crazy. We just, we just want, we want a hug from Jesus. Good. Fill up with that love. And then, step back out. We would much rather go to a show about Jesus and smile and nod and feel wonderful and, and then go just do whatever than we would make the main thing about the love. Because here's the truth. This wonderful building, this wonderful, this could disappear in an instant. 
But, but, however, nothing can destroy the love of Christ that is present in his disciples. Nothing. So when you step out into the world this week and it seems like everything's crazy and everything's falling apart and you get sucked into the spectacular, <laughs> plant your feet, plant your heart, stay the course, because whoever does the light, does the love, does the truth, comes to the light, spreads the light, loves in spite of whatever, so that your actions are done in that love. Think about it. Don't just think. Don't just admire. Go do. Because I guarantee you, if this part of the body of Christ is known as where love of love lives, that's irresistible. That is irresistible. I'm going to close with a true story, and I'm not going to name the person. A couple of you know who they are. Somebody I've talked to several times in the community that has lost their partner and art is grieving. And has asked those questions, why God, why? And stepped away from church, but is now ready to come back and to be refilled with that love. And they heard, bookmark this, they heard that this is a place of love. They heard that this is a place, well, it may not be super fancy, there might, may not be 500 people sitting out there, it'd be great, but there might not be. But they would be loved. Think about the fact. Think about that. What does it mean to be known, even by one person, as that kind of a place, that kind of a community. And then let's do it. Let's continue to love people. Lord, we come before you confessing that so often we are the ones who used to, who were, who thought we wanted. Mm. But Lord, help us to love to receive and to follow your course corrections into the love that you give us in Christ, so that many more might come to know this as a place of your amazing love and grace. In the name of that love, Christ Jesus, we pray and we pledge to truly believe. Amen.